Hey, you, did you park this blooming ticket on my car over there? Yes, I did. What for? Well, you're parked in the yellow line, aren't you? Well, I've only got a yellow line got to do with it. We've been parked here for weeks and I... That's not my fault, is it? Don't well, I mean not your fault. you with him. No, I have another go. Hey, you supposed to be a traffic warden, are you? Yes, you parked that blooming ticket over there? I did, sir. What for? Well, because you're parked in a yellow line, aren't you? Yellow line? I've been parked here for weeks and I... Yes, sir, that's what? why I've been giving you the ticket. Give me the ticket there. Yeah. I'll give you it back if you like. You want to take it back? No, sir, it's your problem. So that's the reason why, when she gets an awkward customer, a traffic warden doesn't lose her temper. She remembers the lesson she learned at the Hendon Police School, where the London wardens get their training. So she's heard it all before. Irene Harris is one of Britain's 5,000 traffic wardens. She's one of the girls who, in theory, no motorist loves, though more often than not, she's a motorist's wife or girlfriend. <laughs> I passed my course all right nearly two years ago, and I've been pounding the Waldens beat ever since. You mightn't believe it, but we walk about ten miles a day. Mind you, I like the life, even though my poor feet do ache all the time. Some things we have to do, like moving on a motorist who's trying to park on a double yellow line. I find women much easier than men to deal with. There are twice as many women as men among London's 1,200 traffic wardens, Though outside London, it's the other way round. Many are attracted by the hours, which can be made to fit in with home life. They work early and late shifts alternate weeks. Others go for the pay. Men and women alike get about £16 a week in central London and about £15 in the suburbs. Senior wardens can rise to about 1000 a year. If the uniform doesn't fit, it's altered. Though there have been men wardens since 1960, the women didn't come on the scene till four years later. Most women wardens are married with families who are old enough to be left. There are fewer single girls, but it's rather a case of if the cap fits. And it fits all kinds of people over 25. Ex-servicemen and women, housewives, retired factory workers, firemen, even policemen. Most of them belong to a union. Unlike some people, London wardens get paid for their lunch hour. Before they go on duty each morning, there's a briefing session. Now, the following wardens are required to attend court tomorrow. At 10.30 in the morning, Mrs. Greenland. Uh, Mrs. Burris. Yes, sir. Mr. Wiles. Yes. And at 2 p.m. tomorrow, Mrs. Franklin. Mr. Hawkins. Yes, sir. That's all. Thank you very much. Carry on, please. I'm based at Bow Street Police Station. We've other jobs today, besides parking meters and restricted streets. Going on point duty, for instance, still gives me butterflies in the tummy. Some girls take to it like a duck to water. The wardens are employed by the police, but a few local authorities, such as Kingston-on-Thames, have for years insisted on keeping their own meter men leaving the wardens to deal with motorists who park on the yellow line. Oh, no, really, I wasn't parking. I just left it here for a minute. He's lucky. He's got off with a warning. Here's a problem which still needs a solution. Why don't meters give change, like underground ticket machines? Britain's motorists have put eight and a half million pounds into parking meters in ten years. The money is collected by the local council. Some of it, though not enough, say motorists, is spent on new car parks. Mostly, when a meter gets a hat on it, it's to leave room for building or roadworks nearby. By the time she goes off duty, a warden will have walked round her beat about 20 times, looking after maybe 50 metres. 
Wardens don't travel in uniform. So now Irene's just one of London's countless commuters going home after work. Her husband, Eric, is an ambulance driver. I suggested Reen took this job when she got bored staying at home. It's a good open air life and very necessary. It'd be much more difficult getting an ambulance up to a hospital quickly if it wasn't for the traffic wardens doing their job. I've had more than one ticket. Not with the ambulance, though. We never stay in one place long enough. Their different shift times make it possible for one of them always to be at home with their 12 years old son, Vincent. Mum looks smashing in her uniform. I like it when she comes up to meet me and she's still got a collar and tie on. The other kids are scared to hit me because they think she's a policewoman. When Eric's home, he often does the cooking, thank goodness. My friends think I'm a bit of a nip being a warden, but then they don't really understand. Irene used to be a dressmaker and found it dull working in a factory. Now she has a more varied life and still finds time to do what she wants to in the house and garden. When they're at home together, they like to go for a spin on Eric's motorbike. I often think how different it is on my beat in Soho when I'm off duty. Sometimes I get a chance to see it when we go up in our old car for a night out. I've had a parking ticket in my time before I was a warden. I usually find a space to park, but it takes a lot of looking for before we can go off on the spree. School crossing duty is the best part of my job. I love kids and it makes a nice change after being sworn at by some of the motorists. It's on this sort of day, I think, mother, is it worth it? Wardens never know who they're going to meet on a metre. Quite surprising sometimes. <laughs> yes, of course, it's Harry Seacombe. This happens to most motorists sooner or later. And so far as the wardens are concerned, it's the end of the story. They don't have to chase the motorists for excess charges. There's a machine that gets the reminders ready to send to people who don't pay up. <laughs>